Hello, and welcome back to another Let's Play of uh, another Half-Life mod called the Stanley Parable. Um, this game is not, this mod isn't really as scary as the Nightmare House one I did, but it's still pretty cool, and I sh think that it's very, very unique, so, yeah. And I love playing this Half-Life 2 mod, so let's start a new game. Chapter 1, the only chapter... I get the whole thing. It's gonna be a lot of narration, as you can see. Well, um, after this loading screen, we'll see what this game is about. I won't talk. Here you go. This is the story oh. of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. That is the whole game. And then one oh. day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. Oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Are you playing? I'm playing! And also I would like to point out that that song in the beginning sounds like the song movie American Beauty if you've seen that yeah I've seen that so let's see here I am I'm Stanley so the whole point of this game is that the narrator here is gonna keep on talking and we have to follow his, what he wants us to do well, let's do this Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers he never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to me. I'm so, so scared of this solitude. I guess lock. Let's go to the lounge. Now worry, it's not a scary game, so hallways isn't that frightening. Hello? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Left door. What happens if we go to the right door? Is there anything bad happen? Okay. Do we get to open any doors? No. I'm gonna keep on getting it. What's that? What's that thing? Oh. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Okay. Let's wait a sec. Okay, now, what is this? What is this? Who is that? Who is Uncle K Kyle? Huh? I know who that guy is. Huh? That's a very nice bulletin board is this. Okay, let's get out. Can I buy a soda? There. Okay, let's see. Boss, I need some help. And the boss is not gonna be there anyway. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Bam, bam, bam. Upstairs. Boss, I was... Entering his manager's office, 
Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Where is the human life in this place? That he began to feel dizzy and a little sick. Ooh. And even Ooh. thought he might pass out when suddenly he Ooh. noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet oh? in the corner of his boss's office. What keypad? Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad, a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, oh. five, seven. Uh, oh. Of course, Stanley couldn't possibly... Oh, okay, this. can I erase this? Five, nine, one... Seven. Hey, wait, wait a minute. One, five, nine, seven. I forgot. Oh no! Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, okay. trying to input anything on the keypad was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was one, nine, five, seven. Oh yeah! Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad. Stanley happened to input <laughs> the correct code by sheer luck. Oh, he didn't. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. See, this is a pretty nice game. Uh, in the radio, you always uh, narrate what you're doing. And it's a good uh, change that I'm not getting scared anymore. Anyway. deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find Boom. rows and rows of monitors, screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, these were but the number numbers. of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why is yes. it so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. My god, where's this place? An enormous control panel, Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking. Eating doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. What? And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? that a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly. He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something... I'm so mad! A spark. Oh, oh there! looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room, and began to climb towards the rafters. Don't tell me what to do, Raider. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Lights. Okay, I guess I'll follow the narrator. Other side. Sorry about it. What is that laser beam there? It looks like someone's peeing. It does look like someone ping. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. The further from enslavement. No more enslavement for me. This stops now. Okay, I see. Tell me what to do. Okay, narrator, please tell me what to do because I disable it. Do I? 
Kasi ano yun, name mode yun. Twirled it. Oh, What? Stanley. You didn't just activate the control, no. did you? After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself? Is that what you wanted? Control? Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. Okay, I'm curious. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe okay, well, sorry. you find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network. Well, 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 wait a minute, I'm gonna freaking disable it. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode. Eliminate the way, I didn't know. Complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Hey, can we? Now, this is making things a little more pleasant, Stanley. Go ahead. Play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Hey, sick. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? No. When I erased your co-workers and turned off the wait machine, a sec, wait a sec. I was offering you freedom and escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever. And then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Now oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what. I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. There we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. What? Except for I one thought thing, there was a move. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're Four, going. Two, seven. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution. As though it can well, be one. Know. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. Wait a sec. This is not a challenge. Wait a sec. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he Damn is no in his environment. And then he lets go. You betray me. He surrenders. And he dies. 30 seconds, Stanley. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just would oh, it could have been a system of Instead, you'll perish now. No, wait a second. I didn't know that you were supposed to enable the freaking gen right now. Start this timer. I do what I was saying when you said that part. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life well, from the time we fade in until stay the here. moment I say happily ever after. Good job, guys. Well, that's it for part one. I'm gonna do another one, and I'm going to disable that generator like he asked me to. Dang it.